Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for Everyone. We have something really interesting for you today, and this isn't usually something that we would necessarily talk about, but given the context of where we are in the world today, it just seemed rather appropriate. And, well, this gives too many hints. Now, some of you might have heard about a so-called worldwide silicon shortage, and yeah, that's all well and good, and I figure if the world's got a problem, why can't we just go ahead and make it just a little bit worse? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I'm kind of kidding. Um, you see, I started talking with one of my friends, uh, actually quite a good friend, about um, silicon, uh, specifically silicon wafers. And uh, they told me about this time when they were in grad school and their university actually had a, a microfab, like a, a tiny scale um, little workshop for producing silicon wafers. And I was like, what? My school sucked. <laughs> no, it's actually really incredible. And, and they spent quite a few years actually studying silicon wafers. And, you know, they told me something about silicon that... I guess I just never really thought about, and, you know, I knew it because I l learned about semiconductor physics, so you learn that it's like a perfect structure of silicon crystals that are arranged in, in a way, like all of the atoms and crystals are arranged in a way such that you end up with what's basically as close to a perfect silicon crystal as, as we can make. Um, that's actually incredible when you think about it and the thing that i didn't think about well you know it's like okay yeah you got a perfect crystalline structure and then sure it all lines up and that's great you can dope it you can build your chips you can do what you need to do but but he said something to me that i just never thought about before and it's if you have a perfect crystal structure and you break it it should break along those lines like, for example, when you cut a diamond, it's the same kind of deal. But in this case, it's about a half a millimeter thick, about a hundred millimeter diameter circle, and you should just be able to cleave whoosh, right in half using a little bit of strategically applied force. And... I guess it just kind of got stuck in my mind. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I just, the more and more I thought about it, the more I wanted to try it out. Worst case scenario, I totally screw this up. And, uh... Now, I'm sure there are all kinds of handling precautions. I'm sure you are not supposed to touch this. I'm pretty sure they are UV sensitive, and yeah, there's probably lots of things I'm about to do wrong when handling this wafer. Ooh! Hi! Why, hello, this is a very, very polished surface. <laughs> that is incredibly reflective. That is pretty cool. That's like a mirror. Oh, wow. I'm not even showing you. What is that? Oh, yeah, it's over there. Ooh, you could use this for some cool stuff. Like, oh my good, you can't, it is. I'm sorry. You just got to let me soak this in. This is the first time I've ever actually seen a silicon wafer before. I, like how, I'm trying to help you understand how clean this is. Um, and like how just perfect it is. It is the most reflective surface I think I've ever looked at. So there's the wafer. Now, this is going to be a trick. I'm going to try to focus on the wafer. I believe I've focused on the wafer, which is funny because you can't focus on a reflective object. 
It's just ridiculous. So now I'm going to attempt to cleave it along its axis. Oh, slipped. My hands are shaking. Oh. All right, I might need to use a flat head. Slipping off with the point. Oh, that didn't work. Okay. Oh! My thumb was in the way of the slow-mo. Okay, we're gonna try that again. That's what I get for touching it. Okay. That was pretty cool, guys. I uh, gotta admit, I'm uh, kind of a fan. Okay, um, so there is a little bit of, like, the corner there that did, I'm just gonna kind of grab that with a piece of tape here. I'm sure that's excellent. So, of course, cleaving is a method of breaking down a wafer into smaller pieces. I don't, I mean, I understand the steps of the process where, like, you know, in order to build a wafer obviously chips are smaller than this wafer so you like put chips on it at some point they need to break it oh that is such a straight line it's like glass it is such a straight line even the edge is reflective like i don't hopefully that's coming through we're like the light here the edge is reflective because it is perfectly planar. I didn't cut it. I didn't score it. I just pushed on it with a screwdriver. That is incredible. And now I'm sure that was my imperfect technique that caused some of it to shatter somewhat normally. But... Even so, that was an incredible, incredible demonstration. I understand why they give you that square section now. <gasps> Tell me I got that. Oh, yes. That is pretty incredible. What's going on there? 
That one didn't want to. Huh. That is pretty neat. So I'm going to try to ship these out to some of you guys. Drop a comment down below if you would like to receive some of this cleaved silicon wafer. Um, just gonna ship out the little pieces. Grab a few names from the comments. This isn't likely going to be high enough quality to use for anything real. Like if you're trying to start up a fab, maybe buy your own. But these things are cheap. And unsurprisingly, you can even buy them on Amazon. What in the world? Yeah. Underneath this. My guess is probably some remnants from the previous cleaves. Probably applying point pressure underneath. Thank you very much for watching today. This has been absolutely incredible. Um, again, Drop a comment, uh, we'll private message, we'll figure out a way to get these out to people. Um, yeah, I don't know. Facebook's, or somebody is Facebook. YouTube has been making it harder and harder to reach out to people individually. So we'll see how that works. But yeah, this was pretty incredible. You know, I, uh, I guess I always knew this is how silicon worked. Like I always knew it was a near perfect crystal structure, which means that I always kind of knew it should break into perfect shapes. There are different um, crystal structures that you can buy um, because of its natural size uh, or its natural geometry. Um, it's this orientation I think there's three of them. It's like 100, 10, and 111. I think 111 breaks into triangles instead of squares, and the other two break into squares. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we've got little shards of crystal. It's a lot like glass now on here. Uh, I'm sure that'll be fun. I'm sure I'll find a couple slivers of that. And not only that, it's conductive. Maybe the ESD... ESD mat wasn't the best place to put this, but that's all right. Yeah, this is a little quick video. I mean, semiconductor physics is you know, something we can dive into. I mean, to pretty much no end. Um, there's so many nuances and quite frankly it's not exactly my area of expertise I, uh, I I know high level how it works but yeah I've never doped a piece of silicon and 
My understanding is that it requires incredibly specialized equipment. Though I suppose, uh, if you happen to have any of that specialized equipment, I would love to uh, go check out a uh, fab. Just visit and tour it, learn about how it works, and tell the world. So I guess if you've got a fab and you'd be interested to collaborate with EE for Everyone, we'll gladly show the world more of the how rather than just the hey look at this really cool polished wafer um so yeah i think this was absolutely incredible <laughs> i i have this weird kind of i don't even know it's this weird kind of feeling um you know no, nothing breaks like this other than perfect crystal structures so <laughs> It's arranged so meticulously. Yeah, just the process to refine silicon into this form is mind-boggling. Uh, and yet, somehow just so incredible. It's like one of those things that you can barely imagine that we can do as people, and yet we do it every day. Dope. Dope. I thought the lid was on. It's not. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just rambling now, but I am, yeah, this is one of those perspective shaping experiences that's really cool. Um, maybe don't do it right now, because of the whole, as we said, silicon shortage. Maybe now is not the best time to just be breaking silicon for fun. But once this whole thing blows over, definitely check it out. It was really cool. All right, take care. Hope you learned something great today. Hope to see you again soon. Special thanks to our Patreon and YouTube channel members. Really appreciate the extra step you've taken to support us directly. Most of all, I hope you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.